Hi folks, Toad here with Visordown.com and we are here to answer your questions about this red beastie that sat next to me. This is of course the Triumph Rocket 3. It is really a bike that doesn't need much of an introduction. It was a huge, huge news story when they first announced they were going to be bringing this bike back in. And also it was a bike that a lot of people wanted to know about because the launch of this bike, which you can check out on YouTube and Visordown.com, was one of the most read and watched bike reviews of the 2019-2020 launch season. So it really is a bike that people want to know about. And this reboot of it is something that I think got a lot of people excited and a lot of bikers who can remember the original Rocket 3. So what we did, uh, we went on the launch of this bike, and as I said, it was a big, it was a big review for us and a big video for us, and it was watched over two hundred thousand times. Um, when we got back from the launch, we didn't just want to leave it there. We did want to get hold of a bike once the press fleet had arrived in the UK and sort of run it around on the UK roads. The reason being is that when you're on a launch, you can sort of get into the the whole launch fever side of things and everything's amazing and everything's great because you're on these amazing roads and the weather's fantastic and somebody else is picking up the barbell. Um, so we really wanted to um, run it in the UK and properly test it on UK roads with UK weather and UK potholes. Um, and we managed to do that just before the sort of coronavirus stopped us riding for pleasure. Um, while we were doing that, we put it out to social media to get your questions on the Triumph Rocket 3. So the chances are that because of this whole coronavirus closing down a lot of dealerships, that probably not many people have got to actually ride this thing or take a demo out for a test ride, which uh, A is a shame because it's a bloody good bike. Um, so we thought we'd try and sort of answer a few of those questions that you might ask yourself if you're out on a, uh, on a test ride. So without further ado, we are going to question one, which was from John Watts and it was on Facebook. And it was, does it come with decent luggage options? Well, yeah, there are two versions of the Rocket 3. So there's the R, which is this bike here, which is the sort of roadster, which is stripped back. It's a bit minimalist. It's really not got much to it other than that thumping great massive engine and these humongous wheels. Uh, there is also a bike called the GT, which varies from this. It's got a, a different screen, although I think this is actually the GT screen because it's got a little flick at the top. It's got forward controls. So the, uh, the, the the controls mount sort of where that sort of bit bash plate is down there. Um, and it's also, you can spec it so that it comes with luggage options. So you've got panniers, uh, 20 litre um, capacity for each pannier. And you can also get a 12 litre tank bag and a 9 litre tail pack as well. So there are options there. It's not going to be the kind of bike that you're going to sort of load up and cross continents on i mean yeah you could but there are much better options out there already in the triumph range and and other bikes that you know that you can go out and buy that are going to be better adapted to it um but yeah there are luggage options out there and they would probably just be enough for you and another person to go away for a weekend away somewhere as long as you weren't planning on freestyle camping or doing anything too hardcore so next question uh, can it do a rolling burnout when pulling away from the lights Short answer, yes. Um, turn the traction control off, and if it's anything other than hot, dry, sort of as it is today, it will spin up the back wheel in probably the first two gears. In the wet, you can get the back wheel to spin probably third gear, maybe even fourth gear if you really gave it some welly. Um, so it's 165, 221 newton meters of torque. These are massive numbers. You know, these aren't really numbers that we talk about with motorcycles very much, and. Uh, it's a lot of a lot of power and a lot of torque and even with a bike that's this big and with a rear tire that's so wide so it's got a huge great footprint on the road it is quite easy easy to uh, overpower the amount of grip that the rear tire's got while we're talking about that i just want to mention something which really surprised me with this bike and that is the traction control system on it is absolutely incredible it'd have to be because of all that torque and because of all that power that it's trying to contain but some traction control systems, you can open the throttle and you feel the back wheel spin and you feel it slip and then you feel the throttle butterflies slam shut as the bike's trying to contain it. And then once it's under con under control, the, they'll open again and you get this kind of on-off throttle almost as if you're just doing that with, the, with your right hand. There's none of that with this. You don't even, I can't even, even in the wet when you absolutely give it a handful of um, throttle, 
I can't detect the spin that the bike is detecting. It just feels like it's gripping. It's it's amazing in in all honesty. It is a really really slick system. I mean, it'd have to be for a bike this big, but you know, you just open the throttle as much as you want, and it will literally do everything for you it will do all of the thinking for you and like i said it is just super smooth and super slick it was really impressive i took it out in the wet and just did some sort of straight line roll-ons in the first three gears and you could not perceive any wheel slip any spin there were you know you, you didn't get the rev counter sort of rising or anything like that there's nothing at all it just found grip at the level of revs that it needed to very impressive bit of stuff uh, another one from tom lee can you wheelie it? No, I can't wheelie it. I've tried. It's bloody huge. Um, but I have seen it wheelied. Kind of, mm, yeah. It, I've seen people get the front wheel a couple of feet up off the ground for a, a few seconds at least. I mean, the thing with this bike is it's over 300 kilograms and um, it's long and it's low. If you had a, an adventure bike that was 300 kilograms, you're going to have the centre of gravity is going to be sort of right up near the uh, rider's ass. This, the centre of gravity, is basically round about the sump which is where the crank of this thing is um, and it's just so long and so low and the center of gravity is so low down as well it is really hard to sort of hook the front end up on it um, when i've tried i just seem to go firing off at the horizon at a million miles an hour and get absolutely no lift off the front wheel whatsoever um, but it's good fun trying anyway Logan Ficken has two questions. So the serious question is, does the torque make for lazy shifting and does it like to lug at low RPM? Um, so I'll answer that one first. Yes, the amount of torque it's got does make, it does mean you can just be extremely lazy. A lot of the time, on a, even the twistiest country B road, you can basically just sit in third gear all day long and you don't have to go down or up a gear. Um, it's got endless shove uh, from nowhere. It's like an electric motor. Um, you've got the same, it feels like you've got the same amount of torque from tick over as you have at the, at the sweet spot. And it's just, it's a, it's so nice because it all happens there and you don't have to rev it. And because you don't have to rev it, you don't have to be going fast to enjoy it. You know, all of the fun starts from tick over basically, um, which is cool. And that's kind of, I don't know if you watched, uh, we did a review of the Street Fighter V4 Ducati, um, the other day and it's a great bike, phenomenal, really, really fast. But everything happens after 8,000 RPM. I kind of, that's sports bike territory. If you're riding a naked, I kind of always think, or I always thought, that nakeds were supposed to, you know, that fun zone was supposed to begin further down the rev range just to make it a little bit more accessible. Otherwise, what's the point in having a naked? Get a sports bike. But this, yeah, literally, all of the revs, every single one of them puts a smile on your face. It's a very enjoyable thing to ride. Until you've ridden something that's got this much torque and is has got an engine that's two and a half litres and because the layout is so linear, the torque delivery, until you've actually ridden one, it's really, really hard to describe it because it's that good. Uh, and the, the second part of Logan Ficken's question was random. Uh, assuming it will idle along in sixth gear without stalling, what RPM and MPH is it at? Um, I tried this out um, the other day when I was going to Sainsbury's and it's in top in sixth it's doing about 1750 uh, 1800 rpm somewhere around there it's a digital um tft rev counter so it's quite hard to sort of figure it out um, but you'll be doing about 35 miles an hour so it will sit like that all day and that's just basically on a closed closed throttle not even opening the throttle and it will just chug along quite happily um probably using absolutely no fuel as well because it is effectively ticking over uh, Peter Asher, is it worth the price tag? I don't know. Well, it depends whether or not you can afford it. Because if you can't afford 20 grand for a Rocket 3, then it's not worth the price tag for you. Um, there will be some people that say that this is an absolute bargain because it's a, an all-new bike, effectively. That's one of the things that people sort of brought up when this bike was released. They, they, they compared the price of this bike to the old Rocket 3. And it always kind of like makes me scratch my head a little bit because... The old Rocket 3 had gone through various generations and updates and so on and so forth. And the further a bike gets away from its initial sort of inauguration, for want of a better phrase, or its first edition, the further away from those costs of development and design that you get, the cheaper a bike becomes. So as the, the bike goes on, it kind of gets a little bit cheaper and then they'll bring it back with a special edition or whatever. But this is an all new bike. So yeah it is a lot of money twenty thousand pounds is a house deposit on a decent a, a decent sized house um 
it is a lot of money i'm not gonna lie but if you want a two and a half liter performance cruiser power cruiser with an inline three cylinder engine uh which looks the most nuts there's not many other places that you can go to get it this is about it uh, so another one from Facebook and this is uh, Punit Raj Singh said how's the heat dissipation uh, how's the heat dissipation especially want to know how it'll do in hot climates and for long rides okay um, I didn't notice too much of it when I was riding it in the UK but I do remember on the launch in Tenerife where temperatures were a lot higher your right leg does get quite warm obviously you've got these um, lovely looking hydroformed they always make a big deal out of these hydroformed exhausts that drive. I still don't actually know what they are. Um, but your right leg is sat right on top of these hydroformed exhausts. Um, and even with the leg shields there, you do get quite a lot of uh, heat coming off the, um, off the right hand side of the engine. It's not unbearable. Um, I'd never advise riding a bike in shorts. Um, but if you're in a, one of these hot countries where people ride around in shorts and stuff, you are going to get a burnt leg at some point because even these... Um, little heat shield things here do get extremely warm um but in the uk it's actually quite nice because it just means you stay a little bit warmer when 99% of the time it's either pissing down with rain or absolutely freezing so uh simon everington says is it straight line only or have they built it so it wants to go around corners too um yeah it's not i mean I read one review from a, a YouTube blogger, vlogger person, or watched it on YouTube, um, and they, they got on the bike and they, they pulled out of a side street in London and they said, oh, wow, it feels really light. And I was thinking, no, it doesn't at all. It's not light. It's 330-odd kilos, uh, 321, I think, dry. Um, it's not light. I don't know how he could say it, but I kind of get what he means. It's It's you can ride it faster and you can turn it quicker and you can push it into corners more than you'd expect you look at these tires i mean it's got like a 240 section um rear tire it's absolutely mahoosive but just having these these kind of chassis components and these wheels and these tires and that engine doesn't mean you can't make a bike handle i mean the ducati x diavel has got a massive rear tire but that thing they are proper good in the twisties they're a really enjoyable bike to ride and this is the same sort of thing as long as you understand the limitations mostly that'll be ground clearance because the pegs on this and the gt even more so do um, deck out quite easily um but yeah, it's it's a big bike, but it can definitely hustle. I don't know if you'd be keeping up with your mates on MT10s or GSXS 750s and stuff like that, because they're much more nimble. Um, but it will surprise you once you get out of the town and you get off the dual carriageway and you, you get onto a, uh, a nice twisting country road that it actually it handles really, really well. Um, the only thing that I will say, and this is kind of... It's because the size of it, the length of it, and also that rear tire, is if you're coming out of a fast um, sweeping corner and you get on the power really, really hard, you kind of get like a tramping motion from the the rear as the back end's sort of skipping. Um, but you have to be going pretty quick for that to happen. It's not the kind of thing that you experience every time you pull out of a corner or on every ride. It's only when you're absolutely on it. So we've got a question from Speed Tripping on Instagram now, and it is, why isn't the fuel range better? Uh, depends how hard you ride it. If you take it easy, you're probably going to get uh, getting on for 150 miles, I would say. It's not the biggest tank in the world. So yeah, if you feel around underneath the side of the tank, it's actually um, really thinly skinned, and it's just all of the engine management system, electronics, ECU and everything, I think is kind of all hidden away underneath there, along with the ABS. Um, so it just means that the tank has to be sort of physically uh, smaller by volume otherwise you're just going to end up with an absolutely mahoosive tank which is start to make it look ungainly same person speed tripping on instagram said i'm five foot seven will i look like a 12 year old who's stolen my dad's bike for the afternoon uh i hope not because i'm five seven um and yeah i've ridden this round quite a lot and i hope i didn't look like an idiot in all truth it's it is a big bike in length weight but it's not in height the seat height is really really low the only thing that you might find is an issue if you're any shorter than us at five seven is that the step over is quite wide by nature of the size of the engine and the width of that two and a half litre three cylinder um 
lump that it's got in it. The step over is quite wide, although I can pretty much flat foot either side of the bike um, without too much trouble. The only thing you have to be careful of is if you're manually moving the bike around and you're actually sat on it. If you lose your footing and the bike starts to go, there's a lot of weight there and you're going to have to work very hard to um, stop it going over. So final question, Kreutz Landrider on Instagram. What mods would you make to it? So what modifications would I make to the Rocket 3? To be honest with you, the only thing that I don't actually like about the bike stylistically wise or functionality wise is the exhaust. I like the hydroformed headers. I think these are cool. They look nice. But those end cans, they kind of look like some sort of fungus is growing out from underneath the bike and they're almost a bit too Art Deco-y retro for my liking. And um, it's quite strange that normally when you try to bring out a new bike, Arrow will be there ready and waiting with a new exhaust system going, there you go, there's your official accessory exhaust. And they haven't for this. Um, so it's, it's gonna take a bit of time for the manufacturers to sort of get their heads around the engine and the logistics of building an, an aftermarket end can that can just bolt straight onto it. But yeah, that's the only thing that I'd change because that one's a bit ugly. Shh, don't tell Triumph. So there you go, folks. That's our readers' questions answered on the Triumph Rocket 3. If you've enjoyed the video, please let us know in the comments section below. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe so you keep up to date with all the latest videos that we produce. And you can check out the full review, both video and editorial, for the 2020 Triumph Rocket 3 on visordown.com. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers.